Hey everyone, Admiral Seabass here. I wanted to start a new and different video series that I'm calling my Game Creative Series. And I got the idea for this after watching uh, General Hangrenade and Rank Carcass do a playtest of a Global War 1914 World War I game from Historical Board Gaming. And it really got me thinking about World War I games and what I think makes for a good and compelling World War I game. And um, so I wanted to just talk a little bit about World War I games. Of course, we've got Axis and Allies, World War I 1914. I'm sure a number of you own this and have played it. If there's any game that that, that Global 1914 game would owe its sort of genesis to from a design standpoint, it'd probably be this one. There's a one massive and fundamental difference, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, Another game I've recently played is Quartermaster General 1914. I've got a video series on that that I'm going to be putting out um, sometime in the near future. I just need to find a, a gap in my video release schedule. I've been making a lot of videos of playing that game, and I just haven't had a gap that I've been able to work that into. But I, I talk more about that game in that series. Um, then you've got other games, like from uh, GMT Games, Paths of Glory. Um this is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's more complicated than Axis and Allies. It's more complicated than Global War. Um, and but it's not a hex-based game. It's a it's an area-based point-to-point uh, -point game, and it's card-driven as well. But it's just really fantastic. And then by the same designer, we've got Great War in Europe Deluxe. This one is a hex-based game and not card-based. So uh, probably even more complicated and difficult to play than that one. There's something that all these games have in common, um, and that's that they all focus on the European uh, area uh, exclusively. And so I want to show this to you. I better turn this upside down um, so I can show you. Um, they all focus on Europe. This is Quartermaster General 1914, just Europe. Uh, this is Axis and Allies 1914. It's Europe plus Africa and the Middle East. Uh, Paths of Glory from GMT, uh, just Europe and um, the Middle East. And then uh, Great War in Europe Deluxe is a little bit different in that it's not one single continuous map. It's three separate sub-maps uh, for the Western Front, the Eastern Front, uh, and the Middle East and uh, Italy. Um, and so they all focus on Europe. And, and from a game creative standpoint, that's what really struck me about the playtest um, that uh, General Hand Grenade and Rank Carcass were doing uh, on, on Global War. Um, because uh, it is a global map that they're using uh, for that game. And I just find that it doesn't fit for World War One, and again, just in terms of watching them play that, I haven't played it myself. Um, but the point um, is that they're developing this game, and I thought it would be good uh, for a historical board game to have some feedback from people like me and others, maybe some of you who are watching this video, uh, about that. And, and I'm going to try to illustrate what I think the issue is with a Global 1914 game. Uh, in, in a very simple terms. And so let me turn this around. And let's look here. And let's see how many spaces there are in this game between Germany and Paris. And if we zoom in here, uh, you can see that in this game, Paris is right here in that game. And that is, I believe, one, two, three spaces away from from Germany. And anybody who's played World War I games and studied World War I knows that, you know, the German drive to take Paris is probably the most critical part, was the most critical part of that war that everything hinged on. And uh, three spaces on this Axis and Allies World War I map uh, between Germany and Paris. If I'm wrong about that, correct me. It might be even as little as two spaces. So let's go to this global war map and see how many spaces there are between. And I realize the 1914 map is different, um, but I don't think it's that different. So in the global map, here's Germany right here. One, two, 
three spaces to Paris or two if you go through Lorraine. Um, so for me, if I'm going to go from a map that is just Europe in the game that I already own and can play for World War I Axis and Allies to a 4x8 map that is big and that simulates the same war. Um, I don't know why I would want there to be the same number of spaces between Germany and Paris as in the game that I already own. For me, what I really love about what historical bird gaming has brought to this game versus Axis and Allies Global 40 is that it's bigger, right? There's more spaces. Um, it's, it's still strategic, but it's more tactical, right? You've got more options for how to get places and go places versus Global 40. Um, but coming from Axis and Allies 1914, um, where it's just focused on Europe and Africa, we add all this territory where nothing really happened in the actual war, and we don't get the chance to add the same level of richness and additional complexity and historical flavor to the main theater of World War I, which was all right here, as we do in this Global War 36 game. So that's why, from a creative perspective, um, I'm not sure I love the choice to have a global map for a 1914 World War I game. I think I'm going to continue to watch these videos and watch the playtests play out from historical board gaming. But at this point, based on what I see now, I don't think I'm, I'm likely to invest the money in the Global War 1914 game that I have uh, in this particular game because I just don't think what I see adds a lot to what I already own, which is the Axis and Allies 1914. What I would love to see from them is a 4x8 map that basically covers the territory that you can see right here, right there. I would love a 4x8 version of that map right there because it would be twice as big, if not more, than the Axis and Allies 1914 game. Uh, you could probably get to anywhere from four to six spaces between Germany and Paris, at a lot more tactical options uh, to the game. Um, places like Serbia could be multiple territories, um, and you'd probably have to come all the way down here too because these theaters mattered down here a lot um, in, in the war. But maybe this... Maybe kind of that right there. You don't need that much of Africa in the game. Um, and I'd love to see the U.S., uh, Japan, Anzac, and Africa represented as boxes in the game. Um, because nothing really happened in those areas. Um, and I don't think you need to represent them on the map. This kind of a view right here... Um, is is enough right here again with not that much of africa is enough um at at a four by eight scale to really add a lot to what uh access and allies has already done uh with the world war one game so what do you guys think um what would you be looking for in a a a, a in a, an advanced uh world war one game uh from historical board gaming when it comes to World War One, I. I wanted to share this. I love what HPG has done with Global War 36. I know they're probably hesitant to do another new map, um, and they want to use the, their global map as much as they can. I just think it doesn't really fit as much for World War One. Um, what a global map would fit for is World War Three. I know they've got a, a 2025 game coming out. Um, that covers the global theater war. I'm not as interested in that. What I am interested in at the global scale is a World War III game set in either the 1960s or the 1980s. Uh, I would buy that in a heartbeat. Uh, that would be fun. Uh, could you imagine uh, having uh, A-10 Warthogs as the U.S. player? Uh, could you imagine having MiG-25s as the Soviet player? Uh, nuclear submarines, uh, options for... Um, uh, uh, 
uh, nuclear war, uh, et cetera, that would be something I would definitely invest in at the global scale. I'd love to see them do a four by eight map of the European theater for World War I. I think they could reuse that for other um, Axis and Allies types of games like Napoleonic's Wars. Um, I think they could reuse that for um, uh, a European theater World War II game, which would be worth playing all on its own. Uh, there was Axis and Allies Europe, if you remember, both the original version, which I think came out in 99, and then another version, which is half of Global 40. Um, so anyway, I wanted to start this game creative series to have these types of conversations. I've got other ideas about Axis and Allies type games for other wars as well. Um, and by the way, there's a new game coming out that was kickstarted last year on the Vietnam War that uses Axis and Allies type miniatures. Can't wait to play that one. So what do you guys think in the comments? Uh, d does World War I fit the global theater and a global map? Or would you rather see a more European, Northern African, and Middle East uh, uh, map at a size like 4x8 that would really, really add uh, to what Axis and Allies done? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoy this new series. Admiral Seabass signing off.